What is up you guys, Fight Fiend Mix here coming at you with a new video. As always, thanks for taking the time to stop by and checking it out. Uh, it is finally, finally upon us. This Saturday, October 17th, we have the lightweight unification fight that we've all been waiting for. Vasily Lomachenko will be taking on Teofimo Lopez uh, live on pay-per-view. No, I'm just kidding. It's not going to be on pay-per-view. It's going to be on ESPN, actually. Free ESPN. Thank you, Bob Arum and Top Rank. Uh, so, yeah, this Saturday we have the uh, the highly, highly anticipated unification fight between these two gentlemen. Um we have been, us as boxing fans, have been thirsty for a good fucking fight, or at least a good fight on paper, uh, since, you know, the beginning of COVID. A lot of these boxers don't want to don't want to fight because, you know, no fans in the, in the fucking arenas and, you know, they get a pay cut, yada, yada, yada. One way or another, we're going to get this fight and it's going to happen this Saturday. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was postponed once before, maybe twice, but I know it was for sure postponed once. Um, so... We're finally going to get it. We're finally going to get it. One way or another, we're going to get this fucking fight this Saturday. Um, you know, barring some fucking fluke where one of these guys end up testing positive for fucking COVID or some shit and just throws everything, you know, uh, through, everything goes out the window. But hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, praying to the boxing gods, none of that shit happens and we get the fight that we want this Saturday. All right. So on to, um, you know, my prediction. That's that's his video here. This is the uh, Vasily Lomachenko and uh, Telfima Lopez prediction video. Um, I've watched a lot of prediction videos over the last couple of days. Uh, I try to I try to empty my cup. You know, I, I know whether I want to or not, I, I already have this, um, I'm kind of biased already. I have this preconceived notion of who I think is going to win. And I do my damnedest to empty my cup and kind of go in this like like I'm a member of a jury or something like that you know I watch all these prediction videos and I get facts from one facts from one I'm like oh that's a good point oh that's a good point that's a good point and I try to gather all the facts that I can and then you know um basically come up with my own fucking decision right I come to my own conclusion by listening to all these uh arguments and, and the different sides uh on, bo on both ends <clears throat> so um that's what I kind of what I did this last week is I was taking a look at some of these these uh, fight prediction videos and they bring up a lot of real interesting points. <clears throat> but um, to to get to my my prediction here, uh, there is a um, there's a saying in the fight game that you're only as good as your last fight. Um, when it comes to mixed martial arts, I don't really feel that's the case because you know MMA is so much uh, so much more unpredictable. With boxing, I feel that's a little bit more accurate. Now, I'm gonna make an exception here because um, you'll see here and. With uh, when me going through some of these guys' last fights, or Lomachenko and Teofimo's last fights, um, the, I'm gonna start with first with Vasily. Vasily, his most recent fight was against Luke Campbell, which was a 12 round unanimous decision win, and then uh, before that, it was uh, Anthony Krola, which was a uh, fourth round KO. Then Teofimo Lopez, his previous fight, uh, his last fight was against Richard Comey, where he won the IBF lightweight championship in a second round KO. Uh, or is considered a TKO. Uh, and then before that, uh, he fought um, Masayoshi Nakata Nakatani, if I can pronounce his fucking name and I'm not butcher it. Uh, that went the full distance. That went to the 12 rounds. So that's kind of why I wanted to take a look at both of those guys, uh, or the, the two most recent fights, because for Vasily, we had the 12 rounds with Campbell, and then a short four rounds with uh, Krola. And then for Teofimo, we have a short two rounds with Komi and a 12 rounds uh, with uh, with Nagatani. So uh, that's kind of why I kind of want to take a look at, at each of these guys' um, two most previous fights. So we're going to start first with Teofimo. As I mentioned, his most recent fight with uh, with Komi, where he won the IBF Lightweight Championship. Um, we didn't really learn a lot from, from Teofimo that night. We knew he had power, right? He's got, what is his, uh, 12 from... 12 by knockout out of his 15 wins, he has 12 KOs, uh, or 11 leading up to that fight. Um, so we knew he had power, we knew he had speed, and we saw them on display in that fight against Comey. Um, that was really it, you know, it was a short fight. He caught Comey probably cold, and that was it, that was it. You know, it was, it was a short fight, so we didn't learn too much. However, the fight before that against Nakatani, that one I felt like we learned a little bit more from Telfino because he did face a little bit of adversity. He kind of went through that kind of like Canelo thing where in the you know middle rounds he kind of slowed down a little bit because he started off well um when before he fought uh, leading up to the fight with Comey I remember hearing the um the ESPN announcers uh kind of commentators talking about some issues that uh, Telfimo had leading up to the fight with Nakatani uh the previous fight um so I don't know if it was a weight cut because you know he is a, a pretty big uh lightweight uh, as a matter of fact Nakatani was having some issues with um uh, with the weight cut as well, making 135. So I, I think it was part of that and part other things that he was experiencing outside of the ring. But 
um, I think we learned more in that fight. The, the perseverance. He was able to persevere. He got himself a unanimous decision victory over Nakatani. So he got the W ultimately, right? Obviously, he's undefeated. So obviously. But uh, there were a few a few points in that round in that fight, kind of in the later rounds, where he looked like he was a little gassed. Uh, he didn't look like himself. He was getting hit with some shots that he normally won't get hit with, and we're like, this, we're seeing a little bit of a different uh, Telfimo here. But uh, he's a young guy, and as as a you know young prospect, we want to see them kind of face a little bit of adversity. We don't want every one of their opponents to just lie down for them, and Nakatani was not going to do that. So. We learned a little bit more about, about Telfimo in that fight with Nakatani, more so than we did in the, the title winning victory over uh, Verkomi. So we learned that he has, you know, he has that heart, he has that champion's, uh, that, that will to, to continue fighting. And he did get that uh, the unanimous decision win. So that's, I feel we kind of, we saw another side of Telfimo there that may, may, may very well play a role in this fight coming up here. All right. So moving on to uh, the, I was gonna say the champion Vasily, but obviously Telfima has a belt as well, right? But the number one lightweight in the world of Vasily Lomachenko, and on many people's list, the number one pound for pound boxer in the world. Um, him is kind of the opposite, as I mentioned. His most recent fight was against Luke Campbell, where he got himself a uh, a twelve round unanimous decision. Now. In the seventh round, there was a point where Luke Campbell, where it looked like Campbell hurt him to the body. He, it, it, it almost looked like Vasily was lunging in and Luke Campbell kind of stepped back and caught him with like an uppercut almost to the solar plexus. And, and it looked like, like Vasily kind of seized for a second and he kind of like wilted, or not wilted, but he kind of seized and his body cinched up and it looked like it kind of like caught and knocked the wind out of him for a quick second. And he was, he was going, he was, uh, he was coming forward. He was trying to hold on to Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell was trying to like separate and throw. And, uh, you know, ultimately Vasily was able to recover and, uh, and then, you know, <laughs> pretty much took the fight over. Oh, he was winning the fight leading to that moment. But that those little glimpses were like, oh, a little bit of adversity now. He has faced, of course, adversity before. Uh, that loss, his only loss against uh, Orlando Salido and then being knocked down against uh, Jorge Linares. So he's faced more, I think, more adversity in the ring than than Teofimo. Considering these guys, they have, you know, they've had short professional careers, um, you know, 15 fights each, as a matter of fact. Um, so that fight was interesting because we got to see, again, we got to see that that side of because uh, when let's be real here when when Telfimo or when Lomachenko was knocked down against Linares, it didn't look like he was hurt. He wasn't really stunned. He might have, I mean, I should say he didn't get his bell rang. You know, it wasn't like he was really really hurt or rocked. He just kind of got caught. You know, and and he kind of got caught. And he's like, oh shit, and then he fell back and he got back immediately and he was fine the rest of the fight. He did kind of you know backpedal the rest of that round, but that was towards the end of the round anyway. But he wasn't really hurt. I kind of feel like he was hurt a little bit more against Campbell, honestly, the shot to the body. We saw a little bit more out of um, Lomachenko in that one, being able to, um, to I guess, I don't know, shake the cobwebs. I want to say shake the cobwebs because he wasn't stunned upstairs, but but he was able to to persevere. He was able to survive. He clinched quite a bit with Luke uh, at the, in that seventh round there, and I, and I highly anticipate, or I highly suggest you guys check out that because, or, or check that fight out, or at least the highlights against uh, Luke Campbell because, I kind of feel like, like like Lomachenko was hurt more in, in that fight than he was against Linares. Um, so yeah, but of course he ended up getting that unanimous decision victory over Luke Campbell. And then the fight before that with Anthony Crolla was a, a four a fourth round uh, KO, which you know he's got. Let me see here, we've got a, a ten. He's got ten by KO. That was nine leading up to that fight with Crolla. So. Um, we didn't really learn too much from you know from Lomachenko in that fight. We kind of we kind of already knew Lomachenko was a shit in that fight against Anthony Krola, and you know he was able to prove it against him, Anthony Krola, in that fourth round. Now, um, in this fight, I I've compared this fight um, with uh, with what was it um, Mayweather and Canelo years back. Um, I was watching the the ESPN kind of countdown twenty four seven type thing that they got going on for uh, Faloma and, and Lopez and. Um, there was a point where where Teofimo brought that up. He says like this fight is being compared to you know to Mayweather and Canelo, and he's like, well, for starters, you know, I'm not I'm not Mayweather, I'm not Canelo, and he's not Mayweather. Uh, so I mean, oh, no shit. Obviously, we're not we're not we're not talking about literally, right? We're talking about figuratively speaking because of the the, the age comparison. Um, so then he says, if anything, you know, I may whether he's Canelo, which I still think is fucking wrong. But nonetheless, I, I, I it's funny that he actually brought that up because that's exactly what I was thinking. I kind of felt like 
like you know, Vasily is 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 Floyd, and uh, you know, Telfimo is Canelo in the sense that he's the young lion coming up that isn't isn't quite ready yet to face the the actual guy, you know, the guy in the division, the the number one pound for pound fighter. But they're kind of meeting in this weird. I, I don't I don't even really want to say that that Vasily's on the way down, but it's kind of like like this. That's kind of where they're going. You know what I'm saying? And they're 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 meeting kind of halfway and. Another year or two, let's just say this fight doesn't happen now and it happens another year or two. It's another year or two that Telfimo gets better and it's another year or two that uh, Lomachenko gets older, which is sort of like, you know, Canelo and Mayweather. So um, that's kind of the comparison that I was making between the two. But, you know, I, I've heard other people also make that comparison and I do agree. I, I kind of feel this is kind of how that is. And it's it's smart for, for Lomachenko to get at Telfimo now. Because he's gonna get better, we all know he's gonna get better, right? Tell him I'm talking about. So give him that, uh, you know, take away that O from his record. Give him that one loss. All right. So um, enough of me blabbering. Um, I, I know I don't like to make long videos, and I'm sure you guys don't like to sit through long videos. So let me go ahead and get, you know, cut to the chase here. Um, what I mentioned earlier with Telfimo Lopez being able to persevere and and withstand the onslaught from Nakatani in the later rounds. I feel like this is going to help him in this fight here because um, after going back and forth on, on who I feel was going to win, the the general consensus right now is that if Teofimo wins, it's going to be by knockout, right? He's the larger lightweight. He's hits way harder than, than Lomachenko. Um, maybe has, doesn't have the speed advantage, but he's not that far behind either. Um, so... We kind of anticipate, you know, that that's going to happen because let's be real, we don't really see Telfima winning a decision, right? We don't. Um, we see him knocking out Lomachenko. Well, if he does have a chance, it's going to be by a knockout, right? But is anybody going to knock out Lomachenko right now? Probably not. You know, that seems even less likely. So, anyway, you cut it, it doesn't look for, good for Lomachenko, or I'm sorry, for, for Telfima Lopez. Uh, we don't think he's going to win the decision. And, uh, you know, his only shot is knockout, but, I mean, really, he's going to he's gonna knock out, you know, Lomachenko, and that seems far-fetched. That's not to say that's not going to happen, of course, because I could be completely wrong, but it seems far-fetched. I kind of feel like he's going to have to dig deep in this one, because I, I, I'm getting the impression that this fight is going to be similar to a lot of Lomachenko's past fights in the guys who are outclassed, and they realize they're being outclassed, and they end up throwing in the towel. Their corner ends up like, you know what? Fuck this. We're getting, we're getting our ass beat. It's not going to get any better. Let's just, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Telfimo Lopez is a young cat. He's a young guy. Similar to how Canelo can get over and got over that loss uh, with, uh, with Mayweather. Because, I mean, there's no shame. There's no shame in losing to the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I kind of feel like there's going to be a point where Lomachenko is going to be schooling Canelo. Or, I'm sorry, Canelo, Jesus Christ. Lopez. So bad that even Lopez's dad in this corner might be like, you know what? You're young. You don't need to take this ass whooping. We can get over this win. Just throw in the towel. Uh, you guys already see where I'm going with this. I kind of feel like this is going to be a late fight, like a late round stoppage. I think Telfimo Lopez is going to quit on his stool. And I, I have a hard time even saying that word quit because I don't really feel like that's that's fair to say. I don't like to, you know, I give respect to anybody who steps into that ring or the cage or the octagon or whatever the fuck. So I don't like to use say quit on the stool. That's just a phrase. Um, but I feel like he's not going to see the end of that. He's not going to see that 12th round. Um, I, I start, I'm starting to feel like he'll be able to survive the middle rounds, Telfimo, I mean, but once it gets to those later, later rounds where his power is not going to be the same, his speed is not going to be the same, and we're, we're going to see a different side of Telfimo on Saturday. He, we're going to see his ring IQ, and I, I think a lot of people are overlooking that, and even me, I'm guilty of that as well because I too have overlooked that, but... This is no knock on his ring IQ, on, on Teofimo, ring, uh, Teofimo Lopez's ring IQ. He has good ring IQ. The thing is, it's just not on, on Lomachenko's level. Not yet, at least. Not yet. That's kind of what I'm sensing. And uh, what's his name? Uh, who was it? Max Kellerman actually mentioned this on, on a, years, years ago on an analogy. I think it was Bernard Hopkins and Jermaine Taylor. But it's a chess match, right? It's a chess match. And at the very beginning... It isn't immediately obvious who's winning and who's having the upper hand, but the master 
is like setting little traps and, and it, he's he's setting things up so later down down the line it looks like oh shit he's obviously winning this one and it isn't immediately obvious in the very beginning and i kind of feel like that's how it's going to be in the very beginning it's going to look pretty even but Lomachenko is going to be setting these little traps, making these little moves that are over time are really, really going to tell. And you're going to see the gap in skill level and ring IQ. Uh, and that, again, that's no knock on Telfimo's Lopez's, uh, you know, his ring IQ. But I just don't think it's at Lomachenko's level yet. So to quit blabbering and just go ahead and get to my prediction, um, I feel like uh, Lomachenko is going to win this one. I don't think it's going to go the distance. I don't think it's going to go the full 12 rounds. I think... I feel like he's going to, he's going to end, you know, he's going to end the fight. It's going to be, well, it's not going to be early, of course, but it's going to go, I'm going to say 10th, maybe 10th, 11th round. It, it almost gets to the end, but 10th, 11th round, I feel like Tefima Lopez's corner is going to throw in the towel and we're going to get ourselves a, a TKO victory, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my, my prediction. Let's say Lomachenko by, I guess that's considered TKO, uh, 10th, 11th round. I feel like like Telfimo is going to throw in the towel on that one, and um, you know it's going to be you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna see a lot about we're gonna see a, a new side of Telfimo, and uh, and it's, this is going to help him. You know this is not I, I some at some to some uh, to some extent I kind of started feeling like this fight was sort of maybe too much too soon, almost like um like I guess uh, Felix Trinidad and uh, and Fernando Fernando Vargas, and and we saw what happened there, right? But of course. Lomachenko is not the thunderous puncher that Trinidad was. Um, but I just kind of felt like, damn, is this too much too soon for Telfimo? But I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, he's, I don't want to say he's going to get schooled, but I think he, he will. I think he might. And I, I, it's, he's not going to take a thunderous ass whooping like, you know, like fucking Vargas did against Trinidad. So so then I was like, no, no, I, I don't think this is too much too soon. I, I think he can handle it, but he'll... He's a young guy, and he's going to be able to get over this loss. He absolutely will, and he's going to move on to better things. You know, I, I promise you that. But anyway, to go ahead and just close up this video, guys, um, yes, I'm going to go with Vasily Lomachenko by late round stoppage. Um, I'm going to say 10th, 11th round, and that's going to be my final prediction. We have, we're going to have ourselves a uh, unified. Well, he already has the, you know, the however, three belts or whatever uh, that Lomachenko has. He's going to add the IBF championship to his collection. All right. Guys, uh, as always, I want to sneak in uh, before I end this video, freshcleantees.com. Make sure to check out Fresh Clean Tees and use the code MIX15 at checkout and get yourself 15% uh, off of your total. Uh, how about that? Um, so uh, to end this video, thank you guys once more for uh, for checking uh, this video out and listening to me ramble for as long as I have already. By all means, I want to hear your guys' predictions as well. I do like listening to your guys' opinions and who you guys think is going to win, whether you agree, disagree, why. Uh, I love hearing all that shit. So by all means, uh, you know, leave a comments. And of course, as always, subscribe. Hit that bell so you can get the notifications anytime I release a video. Thank you guys once more. Have yourselves a very, very good night. And I will see you all this Saturday. Peace.